Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Open Your Eyes to the Universe. I'm Caroline Ward, and it's a pleasure to have you with us yet again for another episode. For those of you who don't know, Open Your Eyes to the Universe is a series of contemporary talks, conversations, open-eyed meditations and interviews with people who inspire and uplift others by sharing their wisdom, insights, and perhaps even most importantly of all, their experiences. Last month on Universe, we were exploring the language of love with Antonella Ferrari. <laughs> Tonight, we're in the company of Simone Ernst and Marie Lisette Dirks in a conversation titled A Life Beyond Belief. So it's a kind of double edged sword. There's a, a, a two meanings. So, how do you get to a life that's beyond belief, but also going beyond our beliefs? So, we're going to explore that tonight because. We can see we live in a world that is becoming more and more divided. So much of what keeps us feeling separate and alone, anxious, depressed, afraid, or feeling superior or inferior, so often it's simply to do with our beliefs. We have this sort of dogged adherence to them, which have meant very often we stop even listening to others. We stop listening to, we stop engaging with, and we stop being open to people who think differently from us. And, of course, now we know social media, with all its algorithms, just feeds us people who think like us, um, things that we're comfortable with, ideas that support our ideas, and so we get more and more narrow and more and more fixed in what we believe, what we think is truth. But a belief is just something we're habitually committed to. It's not necessarily a truth. And when we hold it like a truth, anyone who doesn't think the same as us is wrong. And then they become, in many ways, sort of a a threat or an enemy. So tonight we want to explore what it's like when we do the work to move beyond believing, um, when we're more open, when we're more able to connect and expand our worlds by engaging with others. So if we want a beautiful life, a free life, and lives that are full of joy and love, then opening our minds and our hearts to all kinds of ways of seeing and being in the world will support us in doing that. So I am extremely happy to be able to welcome Down Under <laughs> to our Australian or mostly Australian audience and New Zealand as well. But I know that we have people from all over the world tuning in. Our special guests today are two very old friends of mine um, from Europe. German-based Simone Ernst is an entrepreneur. So she's a businesswoman who began studying and practicing Raj Yoga meditation in 1983. So that's almost 40 years ago. She not just works, she, her, her work in the world probably is a good way to say, is in feminine pedagogy. And she <clears throat> supports women who want to live their feminine spiritual values. So she will be joining us tonight from Germany. It's early in the morning there. And from Holland, from the Netherlands, we have Marie Lisette Dirks. And Marie Lisette is an art therapist and has been a daily practitioner of Raj Yoga meditation for 33 years. 
Activating awareness and personal development are central to her life. Spirituality and its application in her daily life have provided her with many new possibilities, insights and experiences. So just a reminder before I <coughs> hand over to uh, Simone and Marie Lisette that we always welcome your questions. Um, we've got people pulling them in from YouTube and also from this Zoom connection. So please send them in and we'll sort through them and find a way to ask those questions on your behalf. Thank you to those who've already sent them in. Um, and you can, if you're on Zoom, you can pop them in the chat box and we'll ask them in the Q&A after the meditations and the conversations. So I'm going to invite, first of all, Simone to share with us a little bit your story, your background, your journeying um, in this, this last 40 years and, and what it means for you to start to live beyond the structure of belief. So welcome um, and thanks for joining us so early in the morning. Thank you so much. Good evening and thank you so much to inviting me. That's very nice. Yeah, my journey starts really early in my life. I think I was 21 and I was searching for a group or a community which is really doing really positive things in a way that I can change my old thoughts. So I felt there was a lot of injustice in my life and I want to break out from that. I want to have a life really full of joy and maybe of spirituality. And I start this searching and I met a friend here and there. And once a day I got an invitation to a special course um, and I went there and really I found something which changed my old beliefs totally. Uh, after the uh, seminar, I, I went for a course for some weeks and after that I felt totally liberated. One point, the main point for me was at that moment, I be responsible for my own life. It called karma. And this brought me to a level of responsibility for my life and for my thoughts. And in that moment, I, I felt really that I come back to my own self. I was not judging someone for things which is happening in my life. I, I noticed that step by step, I become more and more a liberated person, a soul who is really able to design their own life. And it, it was not happening in a minute. It needs some years, of course. From that moment, I felt I was really me. And that's the best things, thing which could happen in my life. So this was the first point when I start my spiritual journey. And now, some years, some centuries ago, decades ago, I felt in that way, I came back many times, always to that point where I thought, what is the next step? What shall I do? And there was a fast where I, I really searched again for something which br brings me to a next level. 
And it was very interesting. I met different persons. I learned something differently. And step by step, I, I became the person who I am today. And I feel very good with that. It's not the end of my journey. Of course, I'm looking here and there again for something which is really interesting and which is really connected with me. And that's a point in my life where I am now. Yeah, this was the beginning and the starting of my journey. It was a wonderful time and I hope I will have some time more for that. Beautiful. Thank you, Simon. We're going to um, just dance across to the Netherlands now. But I do want to say, first of all, a really huge thank you to Simon because, you know, your world where you teach and you share and facilitate is usually all in German. Yeah. And you have taken the courage and the generosity to be with us tonight. I can't imagine what it would be like to be speaking in a different language, trying to share the subtleties. And I know that you have this capacity through your, through your energy to kind of get the point through. And I just love your willingness and generosity. So I wanted to say that. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to come back to you in a sec. But Marilla said, welcome. Um, you, you're uh, over in The Hague, in the heart of the land of global universal justice, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so lovely to have you with us. Why don't you share a little bit too about how the topic sits with your journey so far? Yeah. Also, thank you for uh, having me with you. Uh, I think uh, to, to go to Australia physically now is not, uh, not a possibility, but to fly there via the internet is a, is a beautiful chance to meet. And uh, indeed, I'm in a country and in a city where peace is, uh, is highlighted. Um, I live uh, around the corner of uh, the Peace Palace, and I'm daily reminded of uh, the importance of peace. And uh, I think when I started the spiritual uh, journey, it was for me like discovering uh, the meaning of a lot of things, um, to have clarity about who am I, uh, to have clarity uh, about uh, what is life about. And I think when I started, I was also uh, mid 20. And um, I was reading, um, I was the only one in the circle of friends that was uh, searching into the depths of meaning. I didn't feel lonely, but I, I felt like um, I, I couldn't have people around me that were like me. I was, I was quite alone in my spiritual search. And, uh, and I went everywhere then. I lived in Amsterdam at that time. I went everywhere to every course, every lecture. I read a lot of books. And what happened that um, I got some answers, um, and especially about reincarnation that interested me very much, like a point of view that was quite different from my Catholic background. And um, I knew this is true that there is more than only one life. But uh, whenever I read a book, whenever I went to uh, a course or a lecture, the, um, uh, the beliefs underneath were quite different and contradictory uh, at many times. So it, it also uh, could be confusing uh, that when you want really to know meaning of life and meaning of self, um, how can I believe <laughs> what is true? Heaven in one book or in one lecture, this is said, and the other book is saying something else about one topic as reincarnation. So then um, my, my search for clarity <laughs> started. 
And I'm very happy when I look back to this that um, I had a certain power of discernment uh, still at that time uh, that I could very quickly uh, decide, do I continue here or do I leave? And one or the other thing happened that I had to leave because I saw things happening that were not uh, congruent, not in line with what they, um, what they preached. Uh, so it was the action uh, was different than uh, what they spoke about. And then I left. And um, at some point I came to, uh, to a center of Ramakumaris and then I had, um, I, I got some clarity and I had a sentence in my mind as um, this makes sense. And it was really in English that I thought this, although my language is Dutch, but I thought in English it makes sense. And for me in this word, uh, sense, it's like I can understand and at the same time I can feel it. It's like resonating with a deep inner feeling of, yes, this is clear and I can, I can follow the direction in, in thinking and in understanding and uh, then it goes further, of course. It's not only knowing, but it's like uh, also practicing. And for me, that is very, very important that, uh, that I can practice what I learn. So, um, yeah, I, I also remember it as a time of, uh, of joy yeah, to, to have this search in my life and um, to get the answers on many questions. That's great. Lovely. So thank you for the background, the both of you. I wanted to just uh, share with those who are watching tonight, because we've had a couple of conversations about this topic, mainly we thought to prepare, but we became very interested and we just kept going and going. And, uh, you know, the famous saying these days, which is you just go down the rabbit hole and you get lost in a topic. And one of the things that we had talked about in our conversations is this idea of when you, when you begin a, a new part of a journey, you need a kind of roadmap, you need a, um, a container, something that, that holds you when you, you don't know the road, when you don't know the way. And in, in many um, traditions, and in, just even in, as we grow up, right, we've got you know, we grow up and we have our parents giving us that container, those boundaries, those sort of tracks upon which we can travel. Um, and then we rebel against them at some point, mostly or not necessarily. And when we become adults, we have to take what we've learned and somehow find our own way, our own lives. We have to grow up. That's, that's the natural way of things. And sometimes that's the same thing in, you know, as a spiritual journey where you begin um, and you, like you said, Marie Lisette or Simone, you find these sort of ideas, you go, that makes sense. And you can just dive straight in and adopt a whole new, like you said, Simone, from one complete change in beliefs. And you go, yes, that works. And then at some point, there's a sort of renewal again, where you've gone, you go through, you know, growing up as a child, as an adolescent, and then you have to become an adult within that too. How have you, I, do you find that as being true? This is a, a very beautiful idea um, in a book called Falling Upwards from Father Richard Raw, who's a Franciscan Catholic priest. And he says the first half of life is very different from the second half, whether that's your spiritual life or your living life. So do you find it, both of you, 40 years and 33 years, 
that it, there's been some challenges in having to confront any beliefs that, that start to not ring true anymore. And you go, oh, I have to face this. Over to you, whoever wants to go first, just take it away. Yeah, I think you are really right. For me, it's a time when I grow in a community, in a spiritual community, where I felt I can really go with that for my whole life. And after some years, I realized that the container is more Simone than Simone itself. It's more like, a, if I call it sometimes, if you see a picture, there's a beautiful frame and a beautiful picture. And you need to grow up some structures, some laws to follow, to, to become more disciplined, to, to learn something. And that's the frame. After some years, I realized that I am the frame. I'm not longer this living, searching soul, human being who is looking for something. I, I had the feeling, oh, I am the structure. And that's nice and really helpful, but this is not the truth. The truth is the picture itself, not the color, not the canva. It's only the idea of the picture. And this is what's happening many times. When I learned something after a while, I became that. And so I, in the beginning, it was heavy and painful to let it go, to be the person who is disciplined, who has learned something and again on the way to something new. And that's wonderful. After a while, again, the same structure is becoming me or I become the structure and then I have let it go again. And so slowly I, I be the observer in my life at which point I have learned enough so that I became what I learned. And then it's easy to observe it and let it go at one point. So you are able to reach a new level in your life. And in the beginning, it was painful. And after many times, when you learned how to let go, how to recognize what's happening, then it's easy and it's also interesting when you when you by your own you observe your own self and rec and realize ah i'm stuck in that point again i'm stuck and then you became very soft with yourself very peaceful and put your own self out of that and create something new for your life so it's it's really that I'm, I'm not the container. I'm not the frame. I am the vision of the picture. I'm the vision of the soul who is growing and reaching one level after the next one. Marie said, I hand over to you. Yeah. It's a, <clears throat> it's a beautiful... Um... A comparison uh, that you that there are two things like uh, the content and uh, the thing that has built the content, and um, that you have to be free from uh, the framework. And uh, when <clears throat> when I was thinking about this subject of becoming free, because that's the aim, have to stand on your own self, on your own feet, and not be dependent on something. What came up in my mind was also the scaffolds. 
That is when they built a house, they put the scaffold around it, and then you don't see what they are doing behind, but they build up. And uh, of course, the scaffold, it gives you uh, a lot of sustenance and support, and it's, it gives you a feeling of safety. But imagine your whole life <laughs> being sustained by, uh, by a scaffold. It would be like being disabled yourself. And um, uh, I recognize what you say, that uh, it's a little bit painful and also a little bit, for me, a, bit, a little bit um, scary because what is happening is that you have to let go some, something that has supported you for a long time and uh, to be able then to stand on your own uh, feet it doesn't mean that you have not that sustenance anymore, but that the sustenance and the support you, you enjoyed all that time uh, has made yourself so strong that you can stand on your own. But it's like, think with children, when they start standing, they are a little bit insecure because they fall down. <laughs> and then uh, they have to, to get a, a feeling of security and a feeling of yes. I can stand on myself. And uh, the, the picture that, um, uh, that, that came in my mind was that um, um, when, um, whenever I am standing there, um, that, I'm, that it's integrated. That whatever has me supported in, in, in the form of uh, knowledge or um, um, certain things that you follow, certain steps you follow in life, you, you put the steps behind another one. And when I look at my spiritual journey, I followed also the ones who were in front of me. And at a, at a certain point, you can't, you can't follow. It's not that you go your own way, in a way you do. It's not leaving, it's not leaving the path, but you leave, you, you, I, I, better I can speak for myself. Uh, uh, the shift was that I, uh, that I had to take up um, my own life in the way I think uh, it is implemented, in the way I will, uh, I will deal with, with everything I have learned now. And then um, you get a very variety maybe to compare with when you uh, sow seeds of, uh, of flowers, when they start, they look all, all the same. And they start with two little green leaves and you see them grow little by little. And they, for a very long time, they remain uh, leaves and you can't see any flower. And they look quite alike. But at a certain point, they are strong, their roots are, have become more strong, the leaves become bigger, and then you go to see the differences between the leaves and the buds. And the buds become very big and they open up. And what you see then is quite a, dif um, a difference in variety yeah, of uh, flowers. So to become the flower you have to become because it's unique. And um, it means that you can't follow any anymore anyone who's in, who was in front of you. It also means that you can't compare yourself with no one else because I'm different than anyone else. And yes, I learned the same things. I had the same support. I was in, in the kind of education but now the time to become that, that flower, it's like being different than the others. And everyone is different than the other. <laughs> and that's the beauty, yeah? the beauty of becoming me. And I know that um, at my very start on this spiritual journey, that was the biggest, biggest question. Yeah? To be myself, yes, you can say it very easily, but who am I? And now, yeah, when, the, when the buds are opening up and the flower appears, it gives a lot of uh, security, but the security doesn't come from the scaffold anymore. It comes from inside. 
So maybe time to uh, to have a, um, a reflection because in each of us there is something blooming and um, actually this inner this inner urge of uh, being and expressing who you are is a very beautiful theme to uh, to acknowledge in the self. So let's have a, a few moments of uh, silence and the silence is also our background. Silence is also like a bottom of the soul where the seed is sown to become that beautiful flower. And I give some commentary in between and let the silence speak to you. Let your inner world come up, come up with some thoughts or inspiration. Because the seed is already sown. It's a beautiful seed, which a lot of with a lot of promises within the promise of inner beauty and strength, the promise of being able to be happy and loving. The seed inside is nourished by pure thoughts and feelings for myself. I recognize gradually my own worth, my value. and to grow in the direction of the flower that I am. I allow the seed time and care. To take time and to have patience to flourish. only thing I have to do is to give it attention, the beauty within, is sustained by myself in the form of pure feelings towards me. As I grow, I discover my own uniqueness in color, in form, in outlook. I don't have to compare with anyone else to be me.
and I allow the flower to spread its leaves out more and more in expression, in life. My roots are strong and I can stand by myself. It decreases the inner security and self-confidence. In the stillness of my mind, I can observe how my life comes to expression from inside out. Whenever I come across a situation or encounter people who are different, I can rely on the inner core of qualities and strengths, knowing that everyone is unique. And that keeps my vision pure and respectful. really beautiful yeah really beautiful
I love this metaphor of the flower. And while I thought about it before, but I've never thought how at the beginning they look all the same. That was really yeah. lovely to think. And then they must grow into what they meant to become. That's they can't stay the same. Mm -hmm. It's their yeah. Job. yeah. So I I wonder if the, if you want to take up now. I think we've had half of our session full of poetry and beauty and ideas and concepts mm -hmm. and big big ideas. You know, and I wonder if we can take this second part into some practicalities. Like I am thinking in terms of beliefs. Is there anything wrong about having beliefs? How do we know when you when you are being limited by your beliefs? How do you know when? Um, beliefs are, are causing this conflict and divide. Can we not, can we ever get to a point where we don't have beliefs? And why would we want to? So, and how do we change them? Like if we find they're hurtful, how do you change them? So I'm going to hand over to the two of you to, you know, move in the dialogue for the next 15 to 20 minutes in a very practical personal sense how do you unravel you know a life that's bound up by believing and is it possible so over to you both mm -hmm. thank you yeah Marilia said I, I think in the beginning maybe the first time when I realized that uh, this structure is not longer supporting me in the way that I can grow more or I can go deeper to myself, I felt that many people around me were thinking about that I am going out of the structure, go over to the opposite or that I don't like the structure. And this was not happening, not a, a single time in my life. I, I don't like the idea of be here and go there and I'm on the opposite. So for me, it's more the belief that I can grow more the belief that I can go deeper to myself and the only thing what I want to do when I leave the structure or the beliefs that I want to reach a new level for myself. Mm -hmm. And it's it's also a point where you don't know how to go and where to go and maybe who can support you. So how was it for you? Did you make the same experience? Yes. I, th I, I think you, you give beautiful words to, to what you are doing. Uh, you, you, you look only to, to your grow. And that your grow is not against uh, something else. <laughs> yes. And sometimes it feels like coming into conflicts, um, not from, from the side of wanting to grow, that's not a conflict, but it's leaving, leaving that what is um, giving you the feeling of being stuck, <laughs> of not being able to grow further. And then you become in a very narrow space um, and lim uh, actually, it gives it gives the um, the feeling of being limited, like uh, to have clothes that are too um, too small for you. You grow, <laughs> you grow, and and the clothes you had are not the good size anymore. <laughs> 
And then it's not uh, it's not that you are angry. No, you only want to to have new clothes, and um, it's necessary. Otherwise, um, you uh, yeah you you feel you are limited in in your progress. That's what I feel. I feel it exactly as as you give words to it. Yeah. yeah, I remember when I when I leave some of the structures where I was in, that also I lost some of my friends, and I was struggling with that. So on one side I miss them, on the other side I don't want to be with them, and I want I were looking for something new or deeper, or. Mm -hmm more interesting for me. So one day I heard the slogan and this shifted my mind to the point I'm not looking for the friends where I lost. I'm looking now for more good people, friends, maybe women where are on the same way like me. And when this was happening in my mind, really, maybe some days or weeks later, a person came into my life. And after a talk of half an hour, we trust, we, we recognize each other. And then I realized she's on the same way like me. So we could mm -hmm. speak very openly and share our experience. And so this was a point where I was looking for people who are on the same way. And when I become more closer to them, also my old friends were also more lovely to me. They saw that I'm really on a good way. And so maybe this is also a good example to don't judge anyone around you for the beliefs, for the structure of thinking. It's only mm. the way they are, and this is the way who I am. So this was really a good lecture for me to, to, to search for women and souls who are on the same way. Yeah. And and did you did you feel that um, um, con uh, that it's labeled sometimes as a as a conflict? Yeah. Uh, it's not a conflict, but it's labeled as a conflict. Mm -hmm. And what I like in your story is that uh, there is an insight after some time that you are not in a conflict, but that you are uh, progressing or growing or developing your own inner world expanding your own inner world. Yeah, yeah. We the have energy in the, in the, you spread, the energy around you is so interesting for other people. So they see, wow, <laughs> she grows up and she's happy and joyful and, and also peaceful and not judging. And uh, so... Yeah. It's not that I was looking for that, but I realized that they think it also in another way about me. And of course, mm -hmm. I felt some moments really lonely. But on the other side, in this time of loneliness, I grow also a little bit more. So I trust and I have to learn to trust myself more and more. This was, yeah, yeah. That's, that was also there. Mm. I think I think for really grow, uh, you have to uh, you have to have the courage to be yourself, and because be, to become yourself is is not a small thing. And in in Holland we have an expression. I don't know if I can uh, translate it, but it means that you don't uh, don't uh, put your head above the um, I don't know the English word. But when grains have grown, they are, they are very tall. And then you put your head above or beyond yeah. that level. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
it's not it's not allowed. Huh? So you yeah. you are um, you are um, criticized or uh, yeah uh, you you can't you can't you can't go forward and that's forbidden in the eyes of, of others. So it, it it really requires a lot of courage to do it, although it's um, it's criticized or condemned even. Yeah. 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 yeah, I I made the same experience, and it's also that my concentration and my focus was more on other people who are on the same way. Yeah, I I don't concentrate it. Not always, but mm -hmm. most of the time, I concentrate mm -hmm. uh, of the other side. So not on people who are comparing or who who don't want to see me growing or don't support me in my own way so it was nice there was also a woman who supported me and never judging always she was teaching she was teaching me in one or another way but never ever judging and this is also something which i was I felt that was helpful for me that if I can't go on, there's someone which maybe I can sit with her and talk to her in a normal way. And then maybe another thought, another idea came up in which way I can move on. So have good people, teachers around you who you trust and they trust you, this is also very important, I feel. Yeah. Could be only one. If you have more, nice, but one is enough, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice. Yeah. I have a question on that, which I think is really... Um, maybe at the heart of spiritual practice and is one of the most challenging things to do. So I want to ask you both, why do we judge people who are different as being wrong? Because I think this talks about our beliefs, like I believe things are this way, mm -hmm. you think they're that way, so you're wrong. I, I must... And then I judge you. And why do we have to do that when we've just been talking about the fact that the experience of support, receiving support from someone who is to totally non judgmental, that it's so incredible to have someone just support you? What is it in our human nature that? that we don't do that for each other in general, even on a spiritual path. You know, we can still compare the flowers, if you like, and go, well, that flower's wrong. It's, it's different and it's wrong. Why do we do it and how can we not do it, given it's so beautiful to receive that and, and to give it, actually? I see it as a very strong, uh, a strong habit. And um, when this lockdown was happening, uh, most of the time I was alone. I live alone, and um, uh, a lot of things that uh, I was used to do that they, they stopped, like in the lives of many people. And then uh, I came to live with myself all the time. And then I noticed how deep this practice is of. Uh, Belief, you can call it beliefs. Eh? It's like a thought coming from unconscious level. It's not, um, it's not that I wanted to do or that I uh, take time to develop this. No, it's, it's there. And it comes from, from within. And um, what I did was um, very um, much attention for the thoughts that I had about me. And then they were uh, full of criticism, of um, doubt, um, um, judging, 
And then I thought, okay, this is what this is what I do with myself. Not good enough. Not good enough. And um, I was really shocked by it because I didn't know that it was so um, down on the bottom. <laughs> when we t- when we talk about flowers, we can say um, the ground where they are in it's uh, polluted. <laughs> so how can they how can they become beautiful? So I did a lot of work uh, on that, and um, uh, I I believe <laughs> I think that. Um, when I do this for myself, I can also um, do it for another one because the change has to come from from me to me in my own interaction with myself. When I really make the shift inside, uh, I have the, the trust and the faith that it's also opening up to others in that way. Mm-hmm. But the answer on that question of you, uh, Caroline, is uh, I think it's a very deep-rooted um, habits yeah mm-hmm. and it, it comes automatically you don't have to do any effort for it because it's it runs itself <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's there and and so if the if the if the internal environment is full of self-criticism doubt um even self-loathing um, no, I'm not good enough, I can't, you know, and which you talked about in the beginning, Simone, the, the importance of being able to observe yourself because if you, we don't really know our beliefs, right? Mm-hmm. We can only recognise our beliefs when we look at our lives, when we look at the way that we interact with others or the way that we judge or, or the way that we stop ourselves from becoming the flower when we're observing ourselves then we can see but mostly we don't see what we believe we we don't notice but if we believe all those things about ourselves then that's the kind of filter through which we look at everyone else as well and it's really hard to see other people being flourishing and beautiful and if we don't feel like that and we our energy of downness is focused outward and we see the other limitations, the, the other sort of shadows. So that's a really powerful point, isn't it? That yeah. it's like clean up your own, your own glasses <laughs> so that you can see, <laughs> see better, see more clearly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think for that, it needs a lot of courage and self-love. So maybe at one point you have the courage to step out and then you realize that someone else, where I call it my friends, is judging you. You feel suppressed and not valued. And what's happening is immediately you do the same. That's Mm. easier than to step back, think and do and say nothing and think about only about yourself. So it's easier to judge other ones. It's easier to, to be limited instead of unlimited. So for that, you need always more trust to yourself for your own steps. And it needs courage to do it in a very nice, quiet and powerful way. You need the power to say yes to yourself and to your own way. And Also, at these days, it is coming up so quickly that you judge. And when I realize what I have thought about maybe a person or a situation, I I really, I step back, say, please forgive me for my thought about the situation or about you. 
And then I realized, so this is not my way anymore. I, I trust to myself to, to live a life which is a bit different of the life from other ones, but it's only different. It's not better or not better, it's only different and that's it. And I honor the life of other ones. So if I allow them to, to live in the way they want to live, I think they, they allow me the same. So mm. for that, it needs courage, a lot, a, a huge amount of courage. And it's not always easy. Sometimes really there is fear behind and loneliness and insecurity, but you know, you have to go. You have to take the step to, for the, to the next level, to, to your own inner being, which you know it's, it's there, it, it wants to grow, it has to move on. And so for that, you need courage. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think that's a, that's a good place to do our second reflection. And unless you want to lead us in your German English, Simon, in a, in a reflection, I'm finding your English so fine, if you would like to, otherwise I can do it. But if I think that the topic and the words that you're sharing are so, have so much energy in them. So um, if you want to just guide us a little bit for a few yeah, minutes. Okay. Yeah. Great. And Peter will give us a little bit of music in the background as well. So that's great. Everyone's used to your, your English now, so no problem. We love it. Courage. I relax my body and sit quiet in my chair, maybe on the sofa or on the floor. Wherever I take a deep breath and go inwards. There's such a beautiful world inside. Maybe I see myself as a point of light, a being. energy which is flowing in the body and I will observe my body the body is breathing and some thoughts are there, I let it go and see the beauty, the light. I feel as a point of light absolutely peaceful.
and it goes around the body. And in this moment of silence, I will ask myself a question. Do I live the life I really want to live? I'm really happy in my daily life with the person who I am. Take a minute and listen to the answer. The answer of the question, do I like them? Do I love them? Can I live with them? Listen carefully to your own self. Maybe there's something else which came up. Maybe you can feel that you are on a step where you have to go, the next step. Maybe you are a bit afraid. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Your own love for yourself, your own peace will guiding you to the right place, to the right character, to the right form of yourself. Embrace it. and be quiet with them.
be aware of whatever thought, whatever feeling is deep in you. This is what you surround you. And this is what you will attract from your own drama around you. Take a deep breath and sit quietly and loving you. The peaceful you. You. Thanks so much, Simone. So I'm so glad that you agreed to do that. That was just, just beautiful and so much courage. I know what that meant for you. And it was really, really beautiful. Such an atmosphere. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to um, just summarize um, where we've got to so far. And then I'm going to ask some questions. We've had some questions come through from YouTube and from the chat box and um, a couple of questions before the, the event. So I'm going to look down to my notes now. So if we go right back to the beginning, some of the things that struck me, Simon, when you said that when you encountered a new understanding, it was like, liberation and this sense of I okay I am now totally responsible for my life um, and that you landed at some point and went oh this is me and that that became the most important thing on the journey to always keep going to the next level of being in you that that's what it was all about and um, Marilla said, you know this, you started to talk about the, the courage in a sense to stand alone, that you'd moved from, you went out searching everywhere, looking for everything. And this really interesting thing between listening to people's beliefs and, and going, yes, that makes sense intellectually, but then being able to feel it. And I, I think this is a very interesting one for people when they're trying to discern what is right for them, where they, their path is, what's their way in any moment is, does it make sense and does it feel like it fits? So this, these two <laughs> together were really interesting. And that sometimes, you know, there are, it's not easy to find clarity when there are so many differing beliefs. So you have to find a way that you can work that for yourself. Then we talked about, you know, that the structure, the container, which I love to have, Simone, you put it as the frame of the picture. Um, and then Marie Lisette said the scaffolding. And we both can, we can all agree the scaffolding is very useful. The frame is, is important, as is the scaffolding. But we're not that. And I loved how you said, Simone, that... Um, you know, you notice that you became the structure, the frame. So you became full of the rules and beliefs and the, you know, the, the kind of tightness of it. And this metaphor that you said, Marie Lissette, of, you know, where you, you're growing up and yet you're wearing small clothes and they just, it's not right anymore. They're too small and they, they're not for an adult. They're a child's clothes, so that they're tight. And, 
and that it can be painful when you realize that you identified as the scaffolding or you know the the the, the container um the frame and that that the pain it's painful sometimes to let it go and then you talked about but then if you if you keep observing and you notice you notice more quickly the next time you've fallen into the trap and then it becomes a kind of interesting game it's a it's it's a habit but but it becomes an interesting game um and marilis said you said that something so true you know it can feel very scary to let go of something that has supported you a long time you know any kind of belief can be scary or painful you know when you stop believing in santa claus you know that's so scary the world starts to fall apart when that goodness is not true anymore <laughs> So whatever the beliefs are, you know, um, that I will have my parents forever, then I find out it's not true. That's not a belief. Or that, you know, people are always good or whatever the beliefs are. But I have to then come back to something within me and find that. And I liked very much this idea that children are standing and, then they fall and then they stand and then they fall and they have to learn to stand on their own. Um, and this point you said, Marily said about rather than, you know, leaving the past or you, it's like you integrate it. It's not bad and it's not wrong and it's not over. It's I became who I am today and who I'm becoming because of that. So it's part of me, but I am not that. And I'm not staying behind, I'm moving, I'm growing. And then you took us to that beautiful meditation, which, which reinforced this idea of the seed and into the, the seedling that all look the same. And then they must grow into this total self, full expression. Um, and that in that point, when that happens, um, there's no more comparison. You can't compare because they're all unique. And that when you start to see someone else who is different, who maybe does make you feel a little threatened, you can come back to that understanding that we're all unique. They're different. Then, and as you said recently, Simon, they're not better or worse. I'm not better or worse. It's just different and unique. And there were things that were really important, I think, about loss and you can lose friends but you have to do you lose yourself or do you lose friends mm. and and I love this when you said you know when you have the courage to trust yourself to even go through loneliness and um, the courage to be yourself then somehow you know you start to not focus on what you lost but what you're attracting, you're going to find others who go on the same way. And then when they come and there's a resonance, then somehow others look to you from the past and they see you're happy and they are kinder. They're, they're, they're not against you anymore because you're not against. And this whole thing of you're for growing and you're not against this power to say yes to yourself and to your own way. And Marita said you talked about the not putting your head above the grain. Yeah. Uh, in Australia, we have a saying which is called the tall poppy syndrome. You know, a field of poppy flowers. They're oh, yeah. all the same height. And so you never, you never can go up above the height. You will be cut down. So it does take a lot, a lot of courage. And this idea that... Um, you know, to observe when you talked about observing your own beliefs and changing those and that then that changes the way that you are with others. It always comes back to there. Um, there's so much more. I, and we, I want to ask you some questions. Um, yeah, so, so let's leave it, leave the summary at that because it's rich and there's more. But there are some questions that 
that people have asked, and someone was asking about getting married. Now, Simone, you're married. You've been married for 40 years, something like that? Yes. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been through some times where, you know, your life paths have gone a little bit like that and then like that and then a little bit like that and <laughs> like that, like that. <laughs> um, and it's a little bit this idea, how do you keep tuning? Now, there's two questions here. When you're in relationships so closely with someone who's maybe with different beliefs to you, how do you live together with that? And then the second question, which is about, you know, if I'm with someone and I'm not sure if I should marry them or if I'm not, you know, if they're the right person, I can't tell. I, I know you can't answer that, but maybe we can talk more generally about how do you find what is your truth when you've been conditioned around certain, you have to get married or you have to do something how do you find your own truth to know what is the answer for you beyond belief? So both of you could speak to that. But maybe, Simone, you start with the first one about how do you, you know, two wheels of a cart going along together and the cart's a wobbly one maybe. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with is my love limited or unlimited? And this includes the love for myself and also for my partner, maybe husband or wife, whatever. So I think if you don't have any limits and you accept that you go high and down, high and down and one of the persons going here and the other in this direction, but at some, one point you come close to again and there is nothing happening, no fight, nothing, but it's only a time where you have to accept your partner use this way and you use this way. And that's totally okay. Some years ago, I went for a workshop and the the title of the workshop was, would you marry yourself? <laughs> and I think this is really interesting. It's so beautiful. I asked myself, would I do? And I would say, yes. And uh, so it's a big yes to me. And when this is happening, it's also a big yes to your partner. It's not about your partner that you decide to marry it's about you it's your decision not the decision from someone else if you can say yes to you and to to the life you want or you choose that's fine also if there is something in the middle a break a high a down whatever if you say yes that's fine includes everything but you have to go and be totally free from the meaning of other people who, who will tell you this is the right way this is a good marriage you have to decide this by your own yeah how do you know that marie Lisette? how do you find your own decision when you've been so maybe all of us conditioned by social um, norms and mores that say many shoulds. How do you yeah. find your own voice? Like yeah. Voice? Um, I learned to make use of silence a lot more. And um, <clears throat> uh it's uh, a little bit like Simona, uh, the question, would you marry uh, yourself or my, would I marry myself? Uh, is that I take, I take the question um, really to me in depth into, into a silence. And I, uh, I ask myself, uh, there's no shoot. When there is a shoot, it's, I know it's always my mind. 
and my mind is full of convictions or beliefs, or, or also of the past or from other people. And then I take it to, into my, my heart or into my silence. <clears throat> it means that everything is possible. Every answer is possible. Let me do some research. And the research I do not with, with my mind. So I don't allow me, I don't, I don't allow myself to have many, many, many thoughts because then I don't know. But I take the question into the silence. And that means that, okay, I put it there um, with me in, in the deep score of a very pure, <clears throat> a very pure um, surrounding. And then I let, it, I let it be there. And then maybe the answer pops up uh, immediately. Or I come to know a few days later. Or I come to know when I wake up next morning. It's like the answer is, um, is showing itself to you. Mm. When, you, when, you when you put it there in your, in your silence, in your, pure, in your pure heart, in your core, then um, the answer will emerge. That, that's really my faith. And I practice it, I practiced it a lot. And for me, it works like this. And um, <clears throat> sometimes I have to wait. And waiting is also an answer. <laughs> I have to wait yeah. until I know it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, not, not everything has to be solved immediately. And then I really don't know. I really don't know. And that's fine. So to, to, to not give myself uh, too much pressure because everything in our world nowadays is uh, under pressure. It's immediately delivered. <laughs> but some answers can't be immediately delivered. They have to take some time, like, like that seed again. It has to come out mm -hmm. and in the truth. And um, mm -hmm. I want to receive my, my uh, answers from truth that I don't am, um, um, how do you say it in English? Deceived. I don't want an answer that after two weeks I notice, oh, I was deceived by it. And it can't be an answer of anywhere or anyone or from, from inside when I, uh, when I take pressure with yeah. it. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thank you so much, both of you. There's one more question, which is like it's, it could be answered in... 10 seconds or 10 hours, okay? Uh, so I'm going to ask you to answer it in 10 seconds, each of you, because we have arrived at our closing time. And it is one of those questions that is the eternal question, comes from Isola Cachedo, and it's how to be more happy. Listen again to, listen again <laughs> to the silence. To our story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think to, to really become happy, you you have to do a lot of um, inner work. It's not it, happiness doesn't come from outside. Yeah. See yeah, I, I would agree with that, and also do and think what makes you really happy. Feel it, and if that is not really. Ha feels happy for you or the happiness is surrounding you then leave it leave it for a moment try it again at another point so happiness is something which is really silent and it's more the energy of 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 your own of your own being like uh, I don't know it's only a feeling of that's it or it's not so yeah so again I think we come back to knowing yourself and observing what it is that makes you feel happy what your thoughts are what your way of perceiving, your way of moving, of being present in the moment or in the future or the past, but you have to know yourself 
and then you know the secrets. It's yeah. not a formula, it's a work or attention, maybe. I have to say thank you both so very much for joining us this month in our universe. Um, it's just been beautiful to have you both with us and the meditations were glorious and the depth and the wisdom and the lightness of this whole time together. Thank you so, so much for being with us. Thank you. It was really a pleasure to be with friends. Uh, um, and then at the meantime, I don't see all the others, but um, I feel a very beautiful, big, big, big circle um, with the same focus. Very beautiful. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you to you both. And thank you all, as Marie Lisette said, it, it's, you know, this conversation, we've had a couple of conversations just because we enjoy them before, but it's a totally different conversation tonight when the presence of all of you can be felt in, in this gathering, as online as it is, as invisible as it is, but the connectedness is very, very real. Thank you for, for your questions. Um, very thought provoking uh, in how to, how to really live this life that is beyond belief where we're free. We're free to be who we are beyond the conditioning. Um, so we're going to put up some slides now on takeaway. And you might like to have a bit of a browse in our online bookshop, Eternity Inc. And this week, we're going, or this month, we're going to suggest that you might like to explore one of three sets of different inspiration cards that we have in the bookshop. Um, Jan's going to put them in the chat. Uh, on the Zoom. So you'll be able to, if you're on the Zoom rather than YouTube, you'll be able to have a look at those on the chat. But if you go to Eternity Inc., which is up there on the screen, so it's www.eternityinc.com.au. And some really beautiful products there. And everything is done in, in a way that's at cost price to support you your journey and the cards are terrific because you can, you know, play games with them. If you're feeling a bit down, you open one and it gives you a message or as you head out into the day, you take a card and you go, okay, what do I focus on today? So you start to work with something from the outside to build your inner architecture so that your house of yourself and your life becomes very strong and beautiful from the inside out. So have a look online and, and see what kind of speaks to you. If you'd like to subscribe to Open Your Eyes to the Universe to receive our monthly updates, please do email us at special.events at au.brahmakumaris.org. And finally like to tell you about our next episode of Open Your Eyes to the Universe. Dr. Raksha Balbazu, and she is a really beautiful friend from South Africa, from Durban. She'll join us next month on Universe. It's Saturday evening, the 22nd of May. It's getting colder, isn't it? So it's good to be inside early. And her topic is it's interesting because it sounds typical, overcoming stress. But the subtitle is Love Versus Force. And she has researched deeply into people living the ends of their lives and how they come to peace and how meditation helps people pass over. That's not what she's probably going to talk about, but the very fact that she's been there and explored the potentially the most stressful times for individuals and their loved ones in a very intimate way 
uh, will give us something to really kind of trust her depth of research. And she's just a beautiful person. Next month, Gabriel will be back in Australia and she'll be back with you on Universe. I would like to thank the Universe team and all of you. It's been a delight to sub for Gabriel. And until next month, when we're all together again, have a safe month, have a joyful month, have a month, whatever it is, and take care. Be hugs and see you next universe. Om Shanti. <laughs>